1982, the roar of the crowd greeted the newly arrived Raiders. Fame, feared, and respected as professional sports winning his team. Remarkable new chapters in the greatness of the Raiders would now be written. In the six seasons before coming to Los Angeles, Raider will to win earn two world championships. First, totally dominating the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl XI in the Rose Bowl before a record 103,000 fans and a huge worldwide television audience. And then, repeating as world champions by totally dominating the Philadelphia Eagles in Super Bowl XV in the Superdome in New Orleans, becoming the only team to have battled their way into Super Bowls in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. In 1982, the Los Angeles Coliseum housed a love affair as the Raider tradition of great hits and great comebacks continued in the new setting. They want to keep the Raiders as deep as they can. Here's the boot. He kicks through it. It's going to be taken by Pruitt right on the goal line. The 5, the 10, the 15, the 20, gets a lane, the 30, breaks a tackle of 35, the 42-yard line. No huddle, 114 to go. Plunk it. The throw complete to Branch at the 40. Dashes to the 35. Hang on to your hats. The snap. Plunkett gives it to Allen. Racing to the left at the 10, the 5. He darts into the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders! Holy Toledo! The Raiders have pulled it off. In 1983, brilliantly prepared veterans like cornerback Lester Hayes and talented pro sophomore Marcus Allen made big plays as the mighty silver and black thrilled their fans and thundered toward Tampa, Florida and Super Bowl 18. Special teams captain Derek Jensen, number 31, opened a five touchdown scoring avalanche for the Raiders. <laughs> Lethal Raider passing struck as speedster Cliff Branch broke open in the end zone. Coach Tom Flory's troops pressured as Jack Squarek turned interception into points. Jim Plunkett handed off. Marcus Allen reversed his field and went 74 yards for another score. Defender Lyle Alzado and countless minions viewing knew that this game, this season, this league belonged to the Raiders. Just win, baby. In 1984, these proud Raiders were again bound for glory as determined, intimidating defenders like number 75, Howie Long, attacked relentlessly. And Mike Haynes, latest on the long list of great athletes in the Raider pass defense, met the challenge with great plays, demonstrating Raider will to win. Inspired special teams, Long, a Raider trademark and tradition, sealed victories as Clem Montgomery, number 28, returned a punt 69 yards behind a clearing block by number 30, Stacy Toran. In 1985, combat-ready linebackers Brad Van Pelt, number 91, 
Rod Martin, number 53, and Reggie McKenzie, number 54, created opportunity for defensive end Lyle Alzado, number 77, to put points on the board for the silver and black. Marcus Allen burst free against Denver as the Raiders were again playoff bound, the fourth time in their four years in Los Angeles. In 1986, before crowds averaging over 70,000, aggressive defense continued. On offense, the vertical passing game struck fear as this Jim Plunkett bomb to Doki Williams beat the Dallas Cowboys. In 1987, a meteor in silver and black, Heisman Trophy winner Bo Jackson exploded onto the scene, turning Raiders draft day genius into on-field brilliance in the Coliseum and on the road. In 1988, Raiderettes and fans alike saw another new symbol of Raider scouting success burst goalward as Heisman Trophy winner and first round draft choice Tim Brown, number 81, returned to kick off 97 yards in his first pro game. Quarterback Jay Schrader and receiver Willie Galt championship-tested vets acquired in trades added firepower. Trailing by 24 in Denver, Raider mastery of Monday Night Football continued. Schrader teamed with Steve Smith. And Chris Barr's overtime field goal sealed another magnificent comeback for pro sports winning his team. Pressure by Jerry Robinson, number 57, and defensive design put number 93, Greg Townsend, in perfect position to go 87 yards with an interception to ensure another victory for the silver and black. On October 9th, 1989, Moonlight marked the debut of outstanding new Raider head coach, Art Shell. A proven veteran of 23 years and three world championships with the Raiders. Shell presented classic Raider concepts. The big pass to wide receiver Mervyn Fernandez, number 86. And great athleticism in the secondary as safety Eddie Anderson returned 86 yards to help down the Jets 14 to 7. Against the Washington Redskins, Coach Shell unleashed Raider power running, epitomized by multi-talented Bo Jackson. In 1990, huge crowds greeted the new decade, but Raider football philosophy remained as Howie Long attacked. And big hits enabled cornerback Terry McDaniel, number 36, to sprint goalward. Bo on the go helped the Proud Raiders open the 90s as they had dominated three earlier decades with a 16th playoff season. A perfect Jay Schrader pass to tight end Ethan Horton 
earn the Raiders their 20th postseason win as the final home game in the first decade in Los Angeles marked the continued greatness of the Raiders. Nineteen ninety one opened for the Raiders with a preseason game in Japan. The home league campaign began for Coach Art Shell's troops against Denver. Young veteran Aaron Wallace, number fifty one, and Greg Townsend, ninety three, pressured the passer. Downfield, corner Terry McDaniel, thirty six, broke up the pass. Pressure continued as trade acquired linebacker Winston Moss, 99, gets the sack. Jeff Gossett, beginning a Pro Bowl season, booms a punt. And special team star Elvis Patterson, number 43, alertly recovers the fumble. Behind blocks by Steve Smith, 35, and Bruce Wilkerson, 68, Jay Schrader calmly finds Willie Gall for the TD in a 16 to 13 win. Next, against the Colts, Schrader screens to new Raider Roger Craig, number 22, who uses blocks by Max Montoya, Steve Wright, and 88, Ethan Horton, for key yardage. Then Schrader hits Mervyn Fernandez, slanting in for the score. Ferocious defense, here led by 1991st draft choice Anthony Smith, 94, helped shut out Indianapolis, 16-0. Two weeks later, the 49ers visit as corner Lionel Washington, number 48, greets them with a pass interception. Then pressure by Anthony Smith sets up a Howie Long interception. Greg Townsend, 93, rushes, and Scott Davis, 70, sacks. A heroic stand led by former 49er Ronnie Lott, Greg Townsend, and Eddie Anderson on one side, then Winston Moss and Anderson on the other side. Four perfect snaps by center Dan Turk, holds by Jeff Gossett, and field goals by number 18 Jeff Jager provided the points for a 12-6 Raider win before a sellout crowd of over 92,000. In Seattle's kingdom, the Raiders trailed by 17 in the third quarter, but Lionel Washington's interception helped ground the Seahawks. Jay Schrader's touchdown passes to Ethan Horton, 88, and Tim Brown, 81, sent the game into overtime. Great effort by safety Ronnie Lott, 42, set up the winning field goal by Jeff Jager as these valiant Raiders stormed back to triumph, 23 to 20. Over 86,000 on hand witnessed Howie Long and Bob Golick halt a Rams runner. And Ronnie Lott halt a Rams drive. Late in the game, Long deflected a short pass skyward for Lott to capture. With airtight protection from Steve Wright, Max Montoya, Don Mosbar, Steve Wisniewski, and 77 Reggie McElroy, Jay Schrader teamed up with Willie Galt for six. Roger Craig powered through inside. Then Nick Bell scored as the Raiders defeated the Rams 20-17. In Denver, blocks by Marcus Allen and Reggie McElroy bought time for Jay Schrader to find Tim Brown open for a touchdown. Hits by Ricky Ellison and Scott Davis stripped the ball for Eddie Anderson to recover. Creative design and crisp execution gets the score as Marcus Allen completes the halfback pass to rookie tight end Andrew Glover, number 87. Classic Raider coverage by Washington, 48, and Anderson, 33. And a final second field goal blocked by Scott Davis ensured the 17-16 victory. The Raiders, pro sports winningest team, have loyal fans everywhere, including Wintry, Cincinnati. Sack leader Greg Townsend, 93. 
Former first draft choices Scott Davis, 70, and Anthony Smith, 94. And veteran Bob Golick, 79, create a silver and black storm against the Bengals. NFL interception leader Ronnie Lott picks off one pass. And linebacker Tom Benson, number 54, intercepts another as the Raiders drive for the playoffs. Raiders special teams excel. Aaron Wallace, 51, punishes the punter. And team's captain Elvis Patterson converts turnover to touchdown. Then, behind an impressive blocking wall including Dan Land, Mike Jones, Napoleon McCallum, Torin Dorn, A.J. Jimerson, and Elvis Patterson, Pro Bowl choice Tim Brown sprinted 75 yards as the Raiders won on the road 38-14. Victory in hostile San Diego means a 17th Raider playoff season. Winston Moss, 99, Torin Dorn, 46, Townsend, Harrison, Smith, Lott, Ellison, and the rest are primed and ready. Nolan Harrison, 74, records his first pro sack. Ronnie Lott, his 58th interception. As the Raiders win 9-7 and earn another playoff berth and their 23rd winning season. One year ago, the Bills badly outgunned the Raiders. This season, it was a different war. Jay Schrader scrambles left, throws right, and Tim Brown breaks free for a 78-yard touchdown. Number 38, Nick Bell, scores behind Wilkerson, Wisniewski, Mosbar, and Montoya. Nolan Harrison bulldozes a Buffalo back, and a Lionel Washington hit sets up a Ronnie Lott interception. But sadly, the Raiders lose in overtime, 30 to 27. With playoff sights at stake, it's a hit parade against the Chiefs. Rookie first-time starter Todd Marinovich is on target with his first pro touchdown to Tim Brown. The lefty, the Raiders' number one pick, then goes to Ethan Horton and back to Tim Brown for a third TD. But KC comes out ahead 27 to 21. Six short days later, it's cold Kansas City for the AFC playoffs. Greg Townsend halts one play. Howie Long, Scott Davis, and Townsend bury the passer. Townsend then pursues and makes another tackle. Number 50, Ricky Ellison tips a pass that Ronnie Lott picks off. Nick Bell rips outside and is en route to a Raider rookie playoff record of 107 yards rushing. Todd Marinovich completes one to Horton down the middle. Jeff Jager makes two field goals, but the Raiders come up four points short in their 1991 championship chase, 10-6. Symbolizing the greatness of the Raiders are seven Hall of Fame players, each presented by owner Al Davis. Jim Otto, the only all AFL center, 15 seasons a Raider. George Blanda, legendary quarterback kicker and 2,000 point scorer, 26 seasons, the final nine in silver and black. Willie Brown, the game's premier cornerback for 16 seasons, the memorable final 12 as a Raider. Gene Upshaw, agile, mobile, hostile. All pro guard, 16 seasons a Raider. Fred Bolitnikoff, masterful move maker at wide receiver. 14 winning seasons as a Raider.
Art Shell, number 78, the prototype great offensive tackle. 15 years, a Raider. And Ted Hendricks, 15 seasons, an awesome force and linebacker. The last nine, a Raider. This magnificent seven, and so many other players, coaches and staff, help mold the Raiders into pro sports team for all decades. Now, Al Davis, who first designed, then guided this unparalleled climb to the top. Davis created the Raider vertical passing game. The power running game. The attacking pressure defense. Al Davis who served as scout coach, general manager, league commissioner and team owner and leader is finally being enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The fire that burns brightest in this organization is the will to win. I think the will to win is more important than any single event. And I strongly believe that in the decade ahead, the 90s, the greatness of the Raiders will continue and that decade will belong to us.